Given f of x equals five plus two x plus 32 divided by x, we're asked to determine the points where the relative extrema occur. Let's first determine the domain of the given function. Notice the only restriction on the function is that we have division by zero when x equals zero. So because we have the restriction that x can't equal zero, the domain, if we want to express it using interval notation, would be the open interval from negative infinity to zero union the open interval from zero to infinity. The reason we want to find the domain before determining the critical numbers is that the critical numbers must be in the domain, which means in this case, if we determine a critical number as x equals zero, it would not actually be a critical number because it's not in the domain. And now we'll determine the critical numbers by determining where the first derivative is equal to zero or undefined. Before we do this though, let's write the function as f of x equals five plus two x plus 32 times x to the power of negative one. In this form, it'll be easier to determine the derivative function. So again, we have f of x equals five plus two x plus 32 x to the power of negative one. And now let's find the first derivative, f prime of x is equal to the derivative of five plus two x plus 32 x to the power of negative one, which is zero plus two, or just two, and then we have minus 32 x to the power of negative one minus one, which gives us an exponent of negative two. Then we can rewrite this as two minus 32 divided by x squared. So notice here, the first derivative is undefined at x equals zero because we have division by zero, but x equals zero is not a critical number because it's not in the domain. So now we'll set the derivative equal to zero and solve for x to determine any critical numbers. This gives us the equation two minus 32 divided by x squared equals zero. To solve for x, let's first clear the fraction from the equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by x squared. On the left, x squared times two is two x squared minus x squared times 32 divided by x squared is 32. On the right, we have zero. There's a couple of ways we can solve this. Let's go ahead and isolate x squared by first adding 32 to both sides, which gives us two x squared equals 32, and then divide both sides by two. Simplifying, we have x squared equals 16. And now to solve for x, we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. We are going to have a positive and negative solution. To make sure we get both solutions, we include a plus or minus on the right. The critical numbers are x equals plus or minus four. So from here, we take the domain and divide it into subintervals using the critical numbers of x equals negative four and x equals positive four. Let's set this up on the next slide. So if we have a number line, we'd have an open point on zero because zero is not in the domain. And then we have an open point at x equals negative four and positive four because those are the critical numbers. So notice how using interval notation, we'd have the four intervals shown here below. And now we are going to test the sign of the first derivative in each subinterval to determine whether the function is increasing or decreasing over each subinterval. And then from there, we'll determine whether the function is increasing or decreasing. And then from there, determine whether we have a relative max or relative min at any of the critical numbers. So again, we should have an open point at zero, because it's not in the domain, as well as negative four and positive four, because those are the critical numbers. So for the test values, let's test negative five in the first subinterval, negative one in the second subinterval, positive one in the third subinterval, and positive five in the fourth subinterval. So now we're going to sub these values into the first derivative, which remember is f prime of x equals two minus 32 divided by x squared. And again, we don't really care about the actual value, we just need to determine whether it's positive or negative. So first we need to determine f prime of negative five, which is equal to two minus 32 divided by the square of negative five, which is two minus 32 25ths, which is still gonna be positive or greater than zero. So we'll go ahead and put a plus sign here for the sign of the first derivative in this first subinterval. 
Also notice how when x is equal to positive five, the square of positive five is still gonna be 25, and therefore the first derivative is also positive in the interval from four to infinity. Let's go ahead and put a plus sign there. And now let's determine the sign of the first derivative at x equals negative one, which is equal to two minus 32 divided by the square of negative one, which is equal to two minus 32, which is negative 30, which is less than zero. And therefore, the first derivative is negative over the interval from negative four to zero. And also, notice how when x is equal to positive one, the square of positive one is still going to give us positive one, and therefore the derivative is also negative when x is positive one. Because the first derivative is positive over this first subinterval, we know the function is increasing or going uphill. The next subinterval, the first derivative is negative, and therefore the function is decreasing. The next subinterval, the first derivative is negative, the function is still decreasing. And on the last subinterval, the first derivative is positive, and therefore the function is increasing. So analyzing the results, notice that x equals negative four, the function changes from increasing to decreasing, and therefore we have a high point, which means we have a relative maximum at x equals negative four. So above, let's list the ordered pair as negative four comma. We'll come back and determine the y value or function value. And then notice that x equals positive four, the function changes from decreasing to increasing, which means we have a low point at x equals four, indicating we have a relative minimum at x equals positive four. Hopefully this makes sense. If a function changes from increasing to decreasing at x equals negative four, we're going to have a high point or a relative maximum. If the function changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals positive four, we have a low point that represents a relative minimum. And we are asked to find the point, not just the location, of the relative extrema. So now for our last step, we need to determine the y coordinates or function values when x equals negative four and positive four. So to find these y values or function values, these are points on the function, and therefore we use the original function to determine the y values. So we have f of x equals five plus two x plus 32 divided by x. So let's first find the y coordinate for the point where we have a relative maximum, which is equal to f of negative four, which is five plus two times negative four plus 32 divided by negative four, which is five plus negative eight plus 32 divided by negative four is also negative eight. This is equal to negative 11. So the point where the relative maximum occurs is negative four comma negative 11 and I will find the y coordinate of the point where we have a relative minimum by determining f of four, which is five plus two times four plus 32 divided by four, which is equal to five plus eight plus eight, which is equal to positive 21. So the point where the relative minimum occurs is four comma 21. One common mistake here is to think that the largest y value is always going to be the relative maximum, and the smallest y value will always be the relative minimum. And that's not the case here. Notice how the relative maximum is negative 11, which occurs at x equals negative four, and the relative minimum is positive 21, which occurs at x equals positive four. And let's verify this graphically. Working our way from left to right, notice how the function changes from increasing to decreasing at x equals negative four, resulting in a relative maximum of negative 11. And then the function changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals four, which results in a relative minimum. And notice the relative minimum is positive 21 at x equals four. I hope you found this helpful.